We introduced the motor vehicle into the case today, the actual car that was used by the defendant. It's the weapon that was used to kill the victims. Uh, we've alleged in the indictment that it is a deadly weapon, and I don't see any reason why it shouldn't have been introduced. Uh, luckily, it came into evidence. We had the jury go downstairs and have a look at it, and we believe it had an impact on the jury, as we had hoped that it would. It's one thing to show sterile pictures in a courtroom, but it's completely a different matter to show the actual car so that the jury can see the damage that was done, to see the residue, to see the blood spatter, to see everything that's involved in that vehicle. So it brings it home to them the magnitude of the defendant's conduct and the way he was driving. And I think it means something to them to know that they're looking at something that an innocent victim died in and also that four innocent people uh, were killed by. So it's done in other cases, and it needs to be done in these sorts of cases so that people understand just how deadly a car can be. What about uh, speed? Introducing speeds today. Uh, today, a uh, Sergeant Tucker with DPS testified about the black box download from the defendant's vehicle. It showed that uh, as he was approaching the intersection, he was doing about 134, 135 miles per hour in his souped-up car. He was moving well over a football field approximately every second, second and a half at those speeds. The victims never stood a chance. They could have taken every precaution in the world, and they would never have seen him coming because he showed up over that hill uh, flying like a bat out of hell, and nobody knew that he was coming. They almost made it across the intersection, uh, but when we get those speeds in front of the jury, uh, we know that he was doing at least 117, according to DPS and according to some of the witnesses. But to get the actual computer data in showing 134, 135 miles per hour just kind of brings it home for the jury, the careless disregard that the defendant had for everybody on Highway 249 on January 10th of 2009. We have uh, set for tomorrow another crash reconstruction ac expert with the Department of Public Safety who will talk about the reconstruction speeds as opposed to the download speeds, and we'll have the medical examiners. I think it's going to be pretty gripping testimony tomorrow because a couple of the victims, uh, they didn't die instantly. Uh, they, one of them died two hours after the crash, and a couple of the people in the car had uh, smoke in their lungs, meaning that they were alive uh, for, for part of the fire. And I think that's going to be pretty significant for the jury to find out. What about the performance of the vehicle? I mean, uh, Sergeant Parker brought up the speed of the vehicle, the type of vehicle that is a cobalt, not designed for just the everyday family car type deal driving down the street. I think Sergeant Tucker described his car, well, it's not your average, it's not your grandma's car. Uh, this is a car that's built for speed, built for moving, uh, just has no business being driven like that on our roadways. In many ways, that motor vehicle and the way it was driven is more dangerous than a gun because he could have taken out any number of people. It could have been a school bus f full of kids. It could have been five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. He could have hit many cars. Uh, just the callous disregard that he exhibited, the lack of concern, the lack of care for the people that were using our roads uh, is why we brought this case to a jury and why we're going to be asking for a significant sentence. Now, what about performance? I mean, there, he pretty much determined that your car was actually altered, too. Uh, Sergeant Tucker had A.J. Foyt look over the vehicle with him and confirm some of uh, his beliefs about the alterations to the vehicle. And they show that the defendant's vehicle had been altered and several alterations made uh, that boosted the speed of the vehicle or boosted the potential speed that the vehicle could go. Uh, Sergeant Tucker testified about that information, how all of that works, the technical data, and what's required to make a car move that fast. Most, most cars can't go anywhere near that fast uh, before they either blow up, like Sergeant Tucker said, or the engine would crash and burn. Uh, this car was specifically adapted and made for speed, and whether or not the defendant did it himself or he bought it with that specific purpose in mind doesn't make a difference. Bottom line is he was driving it at 135 miles an hour approaching an intersection that's dangerous, and that makes it even worse. Oh, well, we just heard the impact and, and uh, uh, of course, looked out the window and saw what had happened and could come out and started coming over to see what we could do. Yeah, the van was on fire. I had a little small fire up under it, so I ran and got my fire extinguisher and 
time I got over it, a little fire, it was out. So I figured, you know, the fire was going to be over with. And people were trying to get the other people out of the van, but then all of a sudden the van just goes up. And uh, when I emptied my fire extinguisher on it, but I couldn't, it was so hot and big, I, it wouldn't touch it. Uh, it, was, it, it was in the middle, right in the middle of the thing. Like gasoline, I feel, or what? I'm sure it was. It had to be, yeah. Uh...